Thank you, everybody. I'm glad to be here, and I will try my best to be inspirational. Um, the title of my uh, speech today is Removing Legal Barriers to Creating Creative, Diverse, and Sustainable Communities. Uh, the working title to that was um, How to Take 25 Years of Banging My Head Against a Wall at Municipal Board Meetings and Distill It into a 10-Minute Speech. Because <laughs> uh, uh, if any of you have been through the regulatory process, you know that uh, in New York State, our regulations are designed to do a good job of saying no to those types of projects or developments we don't like. But they don't do a really good job at supporting those projects that we want, the projects that most of you here are involved in. Um, so what I'd like to do today is take you through a trip through my fantasy town, uh, Capello Town, to see how things um, should be done in your community to how you can learn to say yes. Because if there's one thing I want to do in my 10 minutes today is inspire you to be part of your community and have your communities learn how to say the word yes. Now, in Capello Town, the first thing we want to do is we want to reach out to all aspects of your community. Because as the first speaker today told, told you, in order to have a vibrant community, you need to create that web. You need to get all participants involved. Now, a great way to do that is to come up with a community project. In um, Walden, where I live right now, about 12 or 13 years ago, uh, we did a community park build. It was about an eight-month project where we got a design team, started in the elementary schools, and went to uh, ask the children to help design the park. Uh, community groups in the business community spent the next eight months raising money. We then had a four-day build. On the fourth day of that build, we had over a thousand people there working on that park. The friendships and the bonds that were formed during that process led to a vibrant community council, a business development council that still today is very active in helping to improve Walden, which was perceived back then as kind of a backwards uh, uh, woodchuck village <laughs> and now is, uh, is a community with a lot of young families, a lot of new businesses uh, going on. So that's the first thing. And then once you have that energy, you need to learn how to harness that energy. You need to get people involved. You need to activate them. Now, a great tool we have in New York State is the comprehensive planning process. Now, most of you probably hear about comprehensive plans when there's a big development you want to stop. Community brings out their comprehensive plan, changes it to try to stop the project. After the project is either built or goes away, they take the plan, they put it on a shelf like the uh, Ark of the Covenant in Indiana Jones, and it gathers dust and nobody ever talks about it. Well, in Capello Town, we're going to take all aspects of our community and we're going to use that comprehensive plan as it's intended to in New York State law to set the goals, the objectives, the policies of how we want our communities to develop. And we're going to go to our boards and our um, consultants and the people who work in our community and say, this is how we want you to act. We want you to promote good development. We don't want you to take people away. We don't want you to take the easy way out. Um, once we do that, we're going to tell people about our plan. We have to actively go out and seek the type of people that are in this room today and say, we want you in our community. What can we do to get you in? How do we get an art project in our community similar to illuminated windows? How do we get a falcon? in our community to provide live music. How do we get a brewery, please, in our community so, uh, so I could go have a beer and walk home? Uh, so these are, these are great aspects, but you have to go out and look for people. If you sit and wait for them to come to you, they're going to go other places. The other thing I think we would do in, the, in Capello Town is once we know what we want, we know who's coming there, we're going to have a scheme to get those people approved quickly. And we're also going to have a, a standing committee of people of diverse interests going out and looking to see what are the new trends coming so we can be proactive and be ready for them. Uh, a couple issues, uh, examples I wanted to put before you is, uh, for instance, pop-up uh, businesses. I know most of you probably read a lot about these businesses that can come into a vacant building or some public space, open up a little bit, uh, for a temporary uh, time and create a business in your community. Um, what that does is that trains people who may not have been in your downtown in a while to go downtown, have a great night or shop and say, hey, 
this is nice. I'd like to do this on a more permanent basis. It's a very positive thing. But if you look at most municipal codes and you try to put up a business in a parking lot or try to take a storefront, the first thing the code enforcement officers would say is, well, do I need to send you to a planning board? And if it's a change of use, do they need to set a public hearing? If it's near a state road, do you need to go to the county planning board? So six months down the line, when you're ready to approve the temporary use, it's already gone to Beacon. So, <laughs> so number one, be proactive. Another use that you see a lot about now is microhousing. If you bought a project that would involve any kind of aspect of microhousing, which are living units that could be as small as 375 square feet, or micro apartments as they're now developing in Seattle, that could be like 100 or 125 square feet, I think your code enforcement officer would probably have a coronary. Uh, but if you had someone out there looking and say, hey, this is something we may want to encourage to get young people who are just out of school and maybe just looking for a place to crash, uh, go to the bathroom, cook a little bit, and uh, look at their iPad. It's a way to get the, <laughs> it's, a, it's a way to get them in their community at, you know, at a price they can afford and get their energy and their input in working on the projects that you need to help your community. The other one is, um, how do you get a vibrant downtown? Well, in Capello Town, you want to paint your building pink or you want to do any improvements to your building, you're going to be allowed to do that. So many municipalities, and I was shocked to see the uh, mayor of Tehran in one of our earlier presentations, has the same type of problems that most of our communities here if he thinks the Russians are bad, try to paint a building in most of our Hudson Valley communities without going to the Architectural Review Board, who will also tell you to mute it down. But in Capello Town, you want to improve your building, you want to make it nicer, go ahead. And if it's a little funky, that's even better. The only rules and regulations in Capello Town are going to be at least one music venue, at least one microbrewery. <laughs> and, and, in, and in case my wife is watching on live stream, uh, one sushi bar, restaurant. <laughs> And uh, the other thing we're going to know in Capello Town is once you get what you want, it may not be perfect. And in the words of President Obama that we've heard so much, let's not, be, let's not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. With any use, there's going to be some issues that associated. If we have a vibrant downtown, you're likely going to have parking problems. Put up with it. You know, deal with it. Walk a little further. <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. to get a diverse downtown, you're going to need diverse housing options like the micro housing that we talked about, um, mixed use occupancy buildings, uh, different types of use. If you want to promote um, uh, sustainable development and energy efficient development, you're going to have to learn how to put up with a little bit of different types of architects. Everything in the world that's developed does not have to be colonial. I mean, there, there are other types of architects in, in the world. So you have to embrace change. If you have someone who wants to put a solar panel on a historic building, let them do it. You know, look, what's the greater good? Seeing a solar panel, having the inconvenience of seeing a solar panel on a historic building, or having that historic building underwater in 100 years because of climate change? Um, it's the same thing. Um, to have rules and regulations that allow people to put solar panels in your yards if you don't have the proper sun exposure on your roof. Uh, to allow solar farms to occur in your uh, community. To have standing committees in your municipality that can educate your public as what's available as it relates to weatherization and programs that are available to help reduce energy. Those are proactive, positive things that your community could do, but it means saying yes. The last thing I want to take, uh, talk about, and this is the most important, and I probably have to go back a little bit, but, well, anyway, I don't need the slide. When you have the businesses that you like, make sure you support them. Um, shop, shop at your, buy your produce locally. Go see music at the Falcon. If you haven't, go there. You heard, you saw the Walk Hill River School. Uh, Sean Del Joyce was here earlier. Take a class there. Go buy our class there. Put your money where your mouth is. My epiphany moment, we uh, heard from uh, the chef earlier talking about his epiphany moment, but I was an uh, attorney in a planning board early in my career where there was a room full of people overflowing, fighting a Walmart because it was going to kill the downtown. Rightfully so. I don't uh, 
for grudging on their opportunity, but one fellow stood up from the audience and he said, I'm gr uh, really great that you people are all here to support the downtown, but I've been operating a bakery downtown for 20 years and I haven't seen one of you in my bakery during that time. <laughs> you want to support the downtown, come and buy a loaf of bread. So that's my message to you. One, go buy a loaf of bread. Two, get involved, participate. If you sit on the sidelines, you're not a member of your planning board or your community, you're not going to effectuate change. So thank you very much. <laughs>